and welcome back to part 11 here in this uh, Blue Glow video on how to build a single-ended amplifier. Today we're going to be drilling up the chassis. One thing I've done, because um, the platform on the bottom of a typical uh, little standard, uh, this is a uh, Craftsman, just tabletop um, drill press, the platform on it's fairly small, about that big. And you really can't lay a flat amplifier chassis on it and, and drill very much uh, and hold the chassis steady. So I put about a uh, 20 inch by 12 inch uh, wooden plank here. Put some lag bolts, sunk them down in so it's nice and smooth across here. Gives us a good surface to be able to work with the amplifier chassis when we're drilling. Up next, I totally forgot about something when we were designing this chassis. Um, I forgot about our uh, our 100k potentiometer that we're going to use. So I kind of killed this uh, this power switch. I'm going to move the power down to here and I'm going to put the potentiometer here and then my LED here and I'll end up with some kind of logo right here in the middle. So I know it looks like a little bit of a mess of uh, scribble scrabble at this point but I promise you we can make sense out of it. And we've got all our little devices over here on the, uh, as you can see, uh, laid out that we're going to have to figure out how to either drill, punch, or whatnot. We'll use an assortment of, of things in this process. Let me show you. Okay, along with um, just normal, regular drill bits, we'll also be using some uh, what I call step-up bits. Um, uh, there's a name for these electricians. You knock out um, bits, I think they're called, or something. But they basically slowly, gradually step up as you use them. Uh, we'll be using some of those to make some holes larger than you'd get in a standard uh, that thing probably holds a half inch drill bit and some of the holes will be drilling slightly larger. We've got a one and one eighth inch chassis punch here. This is what we will use here um, to, to cut out the chassis for the eight pan octal tubes. But you have to drill a hole to begin with the size of the uh, center here and then you can use this to uh, snap your chassis. This is a pretty, I say rare, they're, they're, they're either rare or expensive, one of the two. They're not easy to find and when you do they're expensive. It's a, uh, it's a square IEC um, punch that will punch out a square perfect for an IEC plug to drop right back into. So uh, I'm going to leverage that. And then this was one I had been waiting on to come in the mail. It's 37 millimeter. I think it's about an inch and five eighths. But that's what we're going to want to use for these um, these white um, tube sockets for the uh, five pins here for the 807. And as you can see, I've got a selection of other sizes. That one's a really big one, uh, made for a uh, punching out the uh, for metal meters. Um, so we'll uh, we'll get busy here doing a couple of these. Uh, probably going to start with the smaller stuff and then work our way up to the bigger stuff. I just wanted to show you the selection of some of the stuff we'll be using. Okay, and last, we're going to have to uh, drill out some little holes here in the corner. And then we're going to have to use a nibbler to cut this square hole out right here. And it's aluminum, so you can get by with a hand nibbler, just one little chunk at a time, the way these work. Yeah, basically, it get your aluminum in there and it cuts out little bitty bits. Or you can use, I've, I've had this thing for 20 years or more, uh, just a cheap old air nibbler. Um, these things can get away from you though, I'll tell you. Uh, next thing you know you've uh, <laughs> you cut a line all the way across your amplifier where you didn't mean to. So uh, I may, may see which of those I end up using on this. And as you can see, I've raised this platform up using a little lever here up until, you know, we're pretty close to uh, drilling point. So when, so when you come down, you got full motion through this thing. This aluminum's pretty thin, and so I think this was 0.60 and 060, and so it's, uh, it doesn't take a lot to go through it. So it's all slow and easy to work with. That's what I love about this. And hey, guess what? If you mess this whole chassis up, the whole thing was 20 bucks. So you just order another one and start over. Okay, as you can see, I'm making progress. All I did was start it out with one, I drilled one little uh, bit. It was about a uh, uh, 7 16 inch hole in one side and then big enough to get the end of my bit nibbler into. And then it's a matter of just uh, use the nibbler one bite at a time. And it takes, each time you use it, it takes out a little chunk. Yeah, I'll show you 
takes out a little chunk like that of metal every single time. And you just keep working your way. Um, it takes a while. I, did, I, just, I just decided to go the hand route on this one. Because uh, the air nibbler on aluminum can get away from you very easily. But boy am I glad I'm not messing with a steel chassis right now. But you just keep nibbling until you get to your square line. And then you use a file to clean it all up. Okay, I'm down to the point of uh, using files at this point. Um, you know, pretty much got the square outline there. And uh, you just work your way real gently back and forth along these things. And then you clean it up with a little bit finer file. This hole, that's a half hour's worth of work. Uh, so don't think this is a five minute job. Um, you'll put some time into drilling a chassis properly. Alright, it doesn't look perfect from the top side, mainly because the... Uh, the plastics there but you flip it over and you got a pretty good clean hole here all the way around nice smooth edges I need to get that corner just a hair more but uh, it's looking good I'll tell you once you drop the transformer in there put those bolts in it paint this thing um, it's as good as you're gonna get uh, doing it at the house uh, I'm sure there are people out there that have machine shops available to them and uh, all this there'd be a whole nother level of how to go about this but based on what we've got here at the house, this is how we go about it. And honestly, if you roll back the clock to uh, homebrew amps built back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, this is kind of how it was done. And uh, a lot of beautiful amps were built this way. So I'll be proud of it. As you can see, I've adjusted the level of the platform to match the height of this drill bit. Um, making sure I get it dead on there. Take it slow. There you go. It's that simple. I always use a little shop back around here as I'm doing these to keep all these little end burrs and whatnot cleaned up. Um, but you get the idea. We've got all four holes drilled around this thing. Let's see if the transformer will drop down in it. Another little must-have tool here is something called a deburring tool. It's designed to go inside of a hole like you just drilled right there and kind of cut off all the sharp edges that the drill bit may have left. You kind of go around and do both sides like that and you end up with a nice smooth little round hole at the end of the day. Check it out. Dropped right down in. You can see it from the other side here if I can hold it up. Comes right through on the other side nice and neat. The bolts will hold it in place once I uh, I just have it drop down in there but boy doesn't that look sexy. I absolutely love these um, what they call uh, lay down or uh, I call them through the chassis mount transformers just looks great at the end of the day okay um, I always keep a large selection of these uh, I think they're called button head hex uh, bolts and black stainless and these are uh, number 10 by 24 uh, half inch long and if you'll notice they fit perfectly down into these little holes right here in other words this bit I've got on here is the same bit I'm going to want to use with these. And these are what I always use for transformer mounting holes. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these um, eight holes while I've got this bit in there. Always look for synergy in your work if you can. Um, avoid having to swap bits out all the time and uh, take advantage of it. Okay, up next we're going to use a chassis punch here, one and one eighth, to punch out the... Um, octal sockets but the way these things work is you have to first get this uh, bolt here down through the very center and then you put this nut uh, which happens to be the cutting piece up on the other side and then as you tighten these up or tighten it down in other words it actually cuts a nice little hole through your chassis so we got to get a you know I've got a bit in here the same size just slightly larger than the the bolt in this thing and I've marked the centers of the uh, these were the outer two ears that's the center point of the 6S and 7 on each of these and we're gonna have to drill that out at this point. Right, as you can see I got them drilled out. I always keep a uh, handy dandy little shop vac here close by so that you can uh, vacuum up all this stuff and not end up with it all over your workbench. You don't want to end up with that stuff all over your workbench on your floor and uh, ultimately slivers of metal in your foot. So always clean up well after each little drilling. 
So at this point it's a matter of uh, you drop this thing down in through here. And it's a little tight but that's what you want it. You want it snug right there. You flip this over on the other side. Start tightening this down. And then ultimately you're going to get a wrench on one side um, with typically some kind of ratchet socket on the other side. And you're just going to tighten this down until it pops through. So it's just a matter of then at this point of uh, getting a wrench on this. It happens to be a 7 16 inch here. And you just slowly keep tightening this. I'm not even having to hold the bottom point because it's uh, bottom part because it's kind of pulled through at this point. Yeah, we're getting closer and closer here on this thing. Let's see if we can get it to go all the way through here. There it goes. I heard it pop. At this point, check it out. Beautiful little hole, perfectly made for a tube socket. Alright, as you can see the little slugs that come out of the bottom of that thing when you cut them. But I've got, now got four beautiful, perfectly cut holes. I always wait to drill the, uh, the nuts on the outside after I've cut the holes. Just in case one of them shifts to the left or right just a hair like the center one here. Maybe just like a sixteenth of an inch one side or the other. It gives you a chance to adjust on the mounting holes because what's really going to matter is uh, these, you know, getting these big holes right. And we still got these two big ones here to get done. So I'm going to have to jump up to the next size and, uh, and cut her. And this next one is a monster to work with, I'll tell you. Because look at look at the difference. See the size bolt in the center of that one? And look at the size bolt in the center of that. That's, that's getting up there three quarter inch or so. So the way we're going to deal with this is I marked the very center of the 807 on both sides here with... Uh, a marker and we're going to drill using this size drill bit to begin with just take synergy on what I've got in here already okay we've now taken that bit out and we're going to use one of these step up bits and get this thing uh, kind of locked down in here properly and use the uh, good old chuck use the chuck here to, uh, to get this thing locked down in there good and make sure when I turn it on it's spinning nice and centered. You get the idea. A little bit hard to see here, but the goal of this thing is to use this uh, little wedge bit ever so slowly. You got to get this thing centered up on it when you go. Um, one little notch at a time. And you just take it another notch. Taking another notch, and the goal is to keep walking that thing up. Is the you can see here it just cuts, and then it takes it to the next level, and the next level, and the next level. And the goal is to keep walking that thing up and keep this thing kind of centered and straight until I can put that bolt through it. Okay, I kept going until I found exactly the right step, and look, this thing fits snug. Um, you don't want it wobbling around loose. Anymore. You want it, you want it nice and snug on all sides. Okay, same ordeal. This one's actually pretty cool. It's got a bearing on the top here between the nut and the actual cutter. And the same thing here, you can see I got big nut coming through on the other side. Just start uh, start screwing that thing on till you get it all the way up to the to the aluminum. I'm telling you, this is why this aluminum is so great. When you do a steel chassis, it takes considerable more work. This was the scary part. I wasn't even sure I was gonna have a wrench. Luckily I found a uh, a one inch wrench here is what it takes to uh, to tighten this thing so it uh, shouldn't be hard to get any torque on it that's for sure and ta-da check it out beautiful holes um, these little green leaf punches are the way to go they're not cheap that's a hundred and twenty three dollar punch with shipping some of these smaller ones you know I picked up used over the years off eBay for twenty twenty five dollars a piece but if you go and buy new ones, uh, you can spend a fortune. Luckily, a lot of these I got uh, as at a ham fest and bought out a, uh, a whole truckload full of stuff, truck bed full of stuff a guy had, and there were a bunch of these stepper bits and uh, and punches in that lot, so I kind of got lucky there. But that one I just ordered a couple weeks ago, 123 bucks. 
Oh, I like what this thing did. It cut it in half, if you'll notice. The only thing holding it together is the tape. And you can see from this side of the cutter, it's designed to do that. Some of these others don't. They just punch it, and these things get wedged inside the little uh, cutter, and you know, kind of pain to get out sometimes. By the way, um, if you don't have these tools, you know, ask around. You probably got friends, uh, buddies that do. A local machine shop might would do this all this for you for ten bucks, twenty bucks, something like that. If you can catch somebody to do something on their lunch hour. And as I was turning it, I heard a pop. Check it out. Three, four, five, six beautiful holes just where they're supposed to be. And I'll tell you, this bearing here makes a big difference too. The more expensive punches have a bearing up here above and it takes a lot of the kind of pressure tension off of uh, these things when you're turning them. So just FYI. Just so you know, the other reason I got this 37 millimeter, not only for the 807 tubes, it works out poor perfectly for because you can see the sockets will then mount up from underneath like this and you got your uh, your tube pins just perfect right there but the other reason I bought this 37 millimeter is uh, these uh, can type caps it is the perfect size check this out for mounting these things from the bottom and then sticking them up through the chassis so uh, that's why I was willing to invest that kind of money in the thing and the same little ordeal as before um, for all tube sockets and um, holding down the terminal strips. I like to use these six thirty seconds uh, by three eighths inch long um, black um, button head screws. And I got a drill bit out that fits them just about right. So uh, we're going to get busy drilling a bunch of those. Okay, earlier I guided you wrong. I told you to use a one and one eighth inch punch. Which I did, and then guess what? Tube sockets wouldn't fit down in them like that. Um, I mean, when you get these things right, they are beautiful. I mean, they fit snug right in there. But it's supposed to be the 1 and 3 sixteenths that you use. And as you can see here, I had to go back over every hole and use a punch on top of a punch I'd already done. And uh, basically remove just a little bit more. They all turned out perfect. Um, and these things fit right in here, but it was uh, double the work there just because I missed missed on that. So one and three sixteenths is what you want. Okay, the reason I found I had the wrong size holes is because I like to take the little uh, eight pin tube socket now and lay it upside down in here, and I like to come along with a different color marker and make sure I'm marking the very very center of these things on each and every one. Somewhere in your work you'll end up being off, you know, one way or another, just a hair. And it's best to get these things marked right as you go to do them. Okay, it's the following weekend. Um, span two weekends on this thing. So if you notice here, a couple things. One, um, notice how rough this edge looks. I mean, it looks just horrible, right? If you actually peel back the tape, it's nice and slick. It's, the, it's actually the... Uh, the tape that's all jagged here, not the actual uh, edge of the uh, square. It's actually pretty, pretty smooth. But a couple things some viewers pointed out to me, and uh, lo and behold, they were right. Um, you know, on the 807s, I've got to have a place for the uh, for the plate leads um, to come up through, and a rubber grommet. So I'm, I'm gonna have to tack two holes right here, directly behind the. Uh, the center of these two tubes right here and I've also thought about it myself um, back here near the actual uh, fuse holder right in here in the IAC corner somewhere along in here I'm going to want to put another tap that I'm going to use for um, for a ground lug um, on this chassis got to look and the only rubber grommets I've got are the size you would use for um, maybe going through um, with a power cord a little too big so I'm gonna look at Lowe's today and see what I can find before actually ordering something and we're gonna jump back over here and uh, finish uh, drilling out the rest of this chassis okay, I did pick four out of the pack though um, if you notice I'm gonna need rubber grommets here for the output transformer um, on both sides um, as they feed in I'll show you real quick as you can see here you're gonna have to run three wires down um, 
on one end and three wires down on the other end. And the um, the side with the uh, secondary here, the yellow and white, will be the ones that actually go this direction because they're going to come back here to my my speaker output. And then you're going to have um, the, the primaries over here. Oddly enough, this blue wire is actually the, um, if it's set right here, is actually the wire that goes to the plate of the uh, the 807s up there. But I think, uh, I think I do want to take that down through the chassis and then come back up. So the one thing you want to make sure here is that the grommet you're using um, at the end of the day will sustain three wires going through it uh, just like so in a comfortable manner. And that's just about perfect. There's not a lot of room there for wiggle. Um, so perfect. Okay, one thing I recommend doing, get your uh, little micrometer out and open this thing up and then uh, squeeze down on, not, not hard, just till it barely touches on the inside there of the grommet. You can see the size of that. And then what you do is you go and find a drill bit uh, that's just about perfect for that size um, to use so that when you drill through you're actually drilling, getting the in, inner side size there, not the outer size of that grommet. Yeah, a lot of what I do, I can just get by with some standard, uh, you know, American SAE sizes and a little DeWalt kit or whatnot. But sometimes, like in this case, I have to get out a bigger drill bit kit to get the actual size that I'm needing. Okay, we're going to drill out the, um, the holes we've got here for the, for the rubber grommets. Get everything lined up just perfectly. And always touch down one time. Just to make sure we're in the center of what we're wanting to drill. And we just take it slow, a little bit at a time. And there we go. We made it through. Beautiful little round hole for the grommets. Okay, we got the other two drilled out. As you can see, come vacuum all those up and keep moving along. As you can see, the holes are nice and drilled here. But I always do like to come along with a little um, deburring tool and just kind of hit the edges just a little bit to kind of get rid of any any burrs that may exist from the drilling or sharp edges on the holes and uh, makes for a nice clean little uh, little cutout. You see how rough these things look here? They're not. It's just the plastic. Uh, you can see it moving around there. Uh, the holes are actually perfect. And before I moved along too far here, you can see and I'm still working it but uh, the rubber grommet fits. Um, it's perfectly done into that hole. You have to work it a little bit to get all the edges. There it goes, all the way around, perfectly smooth. But I like to make sure that thing fits. I got to take it back out because we still got to paint this chassis. Up next for the uh, for holding terminal strips and whatnot down, I'm going to use these 440 3/8 inch uh, button head stainless steels. So I've gotten out a drill bit that's uh, perfect for um, for those to go through. Up next, I'm going to drill out all these terminal strip holes. Uh, but I want to test one first. I'm going to drill it and then I'm going to stick the screw through it and make sure it's perfect. Okay, as you can see, we just drilled this one out. And look at that. It's just a little too tight. I'm going to step up one size on the drill bit. Come back and re drill that exact same hole. Just slightly bigger there. And then our screw fits perfectly. Okay, at this point we've gotten all the holes drilled on the top except for, and I wrote them right here, um, I've got to drill the uh, anodes, uh, the B pluses here, the wires to come through. But I want to go to Lowe's and pick out some grommets first and then measure the grommets and drill the holes. So we'll have to hit those later because I'll, I'll run out after a while and hit the local Lowe's hardware. So now we've got to drill all these, uh, these endpoints. And one thing I've been contemplating... <laughs> is not having a volume pot in this thing. Um, just most amps I build, I don't put a volume pot in them, but then again I got to thinking, 
maybe a lot of you guys building this thing would want one so that you could feed a uh, you know an iPhone or something directly into the back of this and have volume control so I probably will I just if it was mine uh, and personally for my use and I wasn't making a video I would probably skip that step it's one more thing to uh, one one more thing in the uh, the uh, audio chain I would say Here's where things get quite interesting for me uh, here at the house. And that's because I do not have a large uh, stand-up drill press. Um, this is just a, as you can see, uh, just a Craftsman unit here that uh, you know I picked up at uh, some yard sale years ago or somewhere. And uh, it's just a tabletop unit. And so as you can see, there's not enough room between the base of this thing here and what you're trying to drill to uh, to be able to turn the unit sideways and actually drill out what you need so I always in my uh, shade tree mechanic style here I always have to shift away from using the drill press at this point when I'm doing end caps and I just end up shifting over to a uh, in this case it's a Bosch drill but I uh, just end up shifting to a hand drill to drill these one day maybe when I uh, uh, retire I'll get me a full uh, CNC machine and some larger drill presses, but for now, this is kind of what we're limited to here in the shop. Okay, up next, I absolutely love these banana jacks, but I always take the component that I'm about to be uh, putting together and kind of take it apart and you know examine it. And if you'll notice here, it comes with some grommets that uh, that it'll use. And if you'll notice on the other side of the grommet, it has a little lip right here. And so that uh, the outer edge of that lip is the size of the drill bit you're going to want to use because you're going to want this grommet to actually drop down in and then uh, go down inside with that little lip right there, go down inside of the, uh, the hole. So I'm actually going to use the micrometer, measure this, and then get a drill bit that size. Okay, I've... Um, I got my rubber grommets, went out to Lowe's a little bit ago. If you notice the ones I got are 11 and 30 seconds outer diameter and 1 and 1 eighth inner diameter. I still use the micrometer and measured the inner part of that and uh, matched up with the right size bit. And then I decided instead of putting these holes right behind the, uh, the 811s, I thought I might uh, put them off here at a 90 degree angle a little bit. Um, just to give it a little more of appearance, you can actually see the wires from behind instead of it being directly in behind. I just thought that might be neat. So I'm going to drill these out. Also, I was chatting online with a guy named Mike Purcell who um, uh, hangs out on a good bit of the audio groups that I do. And he gave me a tip to uh, spin my base out of the way. And there's two set screws here that you can loosen up with a, uh, an Allen wrench. Then I can spin my head around, and if I put another board like this underneath the base right here, then I should be able to um, I should be able to drill off the side over here and drill my chassis without a without a floor standing uh, drill press. So uh, quite a good tip there. Thanks, Mike. Actually, even without the board under here, I've got enough clearance now with the drill bit here to be able to drill these things to the ends. Um, without uh, raising this thing. I'll probably still have to drill these ones on the, the longer end because that would be getting up there pretty high. But uh, at least I can drill the ends here. I learned something new here about my drill press. Didn't realize I could rotate the head around like that. And as you can see here, it's turned 90 degrees from where it's typically turned out now. The way I'm going to do all these, I've got a uh, 5 16 inch bit right here, and I could actually probably start smaller than that. I could even go quarter inch. Um, small bit to drill out these larger holes, um, and then I will use um, either one of these or one of these step bits here um, to kind of work my way up to the right size that we need for each of these. All right, let's look at how we're going to go about the power switch right here. So what I'm going to do is turn this on. And I'm going to measure the size of this thing. Um, if I convert it to inches, it's 0.773 inches. Um, but that's not what's really important to me. It's keeping this thing the same. And then finding the right size here on this bit that's going to match up with that size. Which would be 
Oops, that one's not going to get it. That's why I have an assortment of these. And <laughs> what I was going to show you actually is already done. So what I use on this one, what I use here is something called a China marker. You can get these at, uh, it's basically a wax uh, pen. But if you'll notice, I've already marked this thing right here where I've drilled out before. And I've marked right here where I've drilled out before. Um, for RCA jacks and the power cord right here. So that way when I'm drilling down with this thing, I see the white band spinning. I just know to stop when I get to the white band. Okay, if you'll notice, I got my, my hole drilled here with the drill bit to start with. Then, and I might go ahead and do the others. That way when I get ready, I can just switch over to the, uh, to the stepper bit. Okay, we finished the power and the potentiometer. Remember, I gotta come along still and hit them with the uh, a step bit but the LED is a smaller drill bit so while I've got the same size bit I need in I'm gonna go ahead and hit the two RCA's I've already measured them the fuse I mean the two bananas the two RCA's and the two other bananas um, all with this bit and it doesn't matter if the holes come out perfect I mean as long as they're aligned um, because you're going to be using this step bit that, that ends up making a pretty darn near perfect uh, circle out of it Okay, as you can see, I've got them all drilled out. Now I went ahead and drilled a center hole for the IC because I am going to have to use a uh, that square center punch I've got here on this thing. Uh, and the rest of these, I'm going to start reaming them out to the right size. Okay, I'm going to work on the banana jacks, and this is the little grommet that comes with it. If you kind of measure that size where the cutout is, and then come over here and find the the closest fit. It's the one I've used here many times before with this white marking on it. So um, I should be able to turn this thing on now. Move this thing down. Oops. I'm going to have to put something underneath this. I'm um, too far away. I don't have enough movement um, here on this thing to get all the way up to that point in the bit. So what I did was I moved the vise back on the bench. I put a uh, 1 by 10 I had laying here. And then as you can see, up top it gets the bit right above the hole so that then at that point, um, as you can see here, you got enough movement to get all the way down to that point with the bit. Alright, at some point I had to shim underneath that just a little bit with some cardboard, but as you can see, beautiful perfectly round holes and that uh, little grommet drops right there into its, uh, into its little recessed area. It goes right down in there just perfectly. So, two down and uh, several more to go. And the good news is I just measure, measured the fuse holder and I also took the fuse holder out and tried to stick it in one of these holes. It's the exact same size holes. Sweet. And similarly for this IAC uh, punch, I just uh, used the stepper bit here to get um, stepped it until I found the right size hole for that uh, bolt. You don't want it any larger than that. Uh, things will get off center. Okay, same story as before except for because of the width of this uh, punch, I'm actually having to tighten it from the other side here. Uh, just a three quarter inch wrench. But if you don't have a square punch like this, you could simply, um, as you can see here, if you don't have a square punch, you could simply use the nibbler like I did earlier. Drill a square hole, I mean drill a round hole, mark you a square on this thing, and just nibble out until you, uh, until you get all the nice and square. Absolutely love this tool. Um, as you tighten it down, it just uh, cuts a nice, clean, perfect little square hole for an IC, IC connector on the back of this thing. As you can see, i got the IC connector dropped down in there now. And I'm going to come along and mark exactly where I'm going to drill the, uh, the two holes on that thing at this point. Okay, I'll drill it out. Little holes here on the side. And all I've got left are the place, places to hold the choke here on the side, which I'm not going to be able to pull off here with the drill press. I'm going to just have to drill these uh, four by hand, which shouldn't be too bad because they're kind of small. The bigger the bit is, the harder that is to do by hand. Okay, the way I like to drill something by hand like this is with the item laying flat on the workbench and then come in from the side like this. Because you have the, you know, you got a lot of control and a lot of pressure. This thing's not going to move. If you try holding this thing up here and coming down with it, uh, you got all kind of wobble, wobble in your system as you're attempting to uh, to do that. So just take it slow. And there you 
there you go. Okay, we got all four sides done. Took about 30 seconds or a minute. And uh, I think we got this thing all drilled out at this point. Oh, nope, we don't. Still got to get the, uh, the power switch, the pot, and the LED here with the uh, stepper bit. Okay, we got the pot drilled out to the right size. Got the uh, power switch, but you got to be careful because um, this power switch here, if you'll notice, it has a little groove along one side right there. So I'm going to need to uh, pick which side is uh, like this side to the left here. And I'm going to have to notch that a little bit with a Dremel tool or something so that this thing will slide down on in there. If you're not careful, you'll try to enlarge this hole till this thing fits. Then it's, uh, then it's wobbly because it's made to have a little cutout to keep the power switch from turning once it's in there. And last but not least, we got this uh, small little hole drilled out here for the uh, for the bezel for the uh, little light I'm going to put on this thing. That's it. We've drilled them all out now at this point. We've got uh, got all the sides here, potentiometer, power, LED. Got all the top places done. Got all these. We've got the two sides. Um, that's, I don't know, that's good, a little bit. that's a good two hours, or maybe three, um, half a day worth of uh, planning, plotting, measuring, drilling, and uh, getting it to where you want it to, so, uh, tell you what, we are uh, going to paint this thing now, so up next we'll be peeling off this white plastic. Typically what I'll do is just find a spot where it's starting to come up already, and you just kind of start peeling at that point and uh, you know it kind of comes off in sheets and you'll have a few little spots here and there where uh, where certainly the plastic didn't protect it and got a little scratched or something but uh, it's pretty cool how this stuff comes off and uh, you can see underneath of it then it really starts to look like a uh, good looking little chassis at that point um, so we can get this off. I mean, if you took took your took a little more care than I did with uh, the drilling and whatnot, you could probably get by without even painting this chassis at this point. But I'm not crazy about the uh, the aluminum chassis like that. But look how good the thing looks. Uh, Nice smooth holes all the way around uh, for the most part. I do need to come along on the outside now with my uh, uh, little deburring tool and typically just walk around to kind of smooth out the edges on this side. I didn't do that because of the plastic earlier, but we'll go around and hit this side one time and then we're going to prep this thing for paint. Okay, but other than a bunch of ugly fingerprints on it, um, chassis is looking beautiful. If you remember our uh, transformer, if I can get the plug just down in here, and I'm about to lose my voice for some reason. It could be three days of riding around out in the rain at the the uh, Shelby Ham Fest. Almost did me in, um, but it was a few fruitful trip, and uh, we're gonna going to uh, make a video out of that. Well, there we go. Check it out. This thing's going to look mighty good when we get done with it. So uh, I'm excited. Um, let's get this thing outside and paint it. Okay, I know I made it look a little rough, but I basically used a Dremel tool with a uh, you know a grinding stone on it to just smooth out all these. Uh, oops, I found a spot right there. Just a little rough spot. There we go. Nice and smooth. I'm just getting it all smooth all the way around. Doesn't matter, I'm going to paint it. If I was not going to paint it, I would not have done that step. Okay, I always use my trusty garbage can out here. And we're going to use something called Krylon Wrinkle Finish. And uh, I'm supposed to shake this thing quite a good bit, quite a good amount of time. And then uh, eight, to, 8 to 12 inches away, you just start applying coats um, all the way around not too deep in any one spot and you just keep applying keep kind of getting around 
Okay, that's one good coat on it. I want to be careful not to get it to run. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for five minutes and then you apply a second coat and then a third coat and a fourth coat about every five minutes. And then about two hours later this stuff actually crinkles up. Um, and I'm doing this out in the direct sunlight. It's about 80 degrees out here today. Okay, it's been a couple hours now. It's dried and uh, and I've even tried applying, you know, some heat with a, with a heat gun on this thing and it just did not turn out well at all. I don't know if maybe this paint um, was not good, but I've, I've used this before on other things and it's turned out quite well. So I'm not sure if it's the temperature. It also ended up with uh, all these splotchy, like, splotchy places on it. So, you know, I shook this stuff for like 10 minutes, so it shouldn't be that it was the mixture of it. I just wonder if maybe I've got a bad batch of paint. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it here. I'm going to end up uh, stripping this thing down, taking it over here to a local powder coat shop, have them powder coat this thing, and I'll get it back in a week or two, and um, we'll be will be good to go at that point. You notice I'm not painting the underside. I want to leave it, uh, I certainly want to leave it um, nice and clean because uh, we'll, we'll attach ground to it and whatnot. So uh, also there's a there's a bottom metal plate to this thing. So I'm going to leave it that way. Sorry this didn't turn out perfect. Not everything does and we're going to see what, see if we can figure out what caused this and uh, try not to replicate it. Okay, as we wind this thing up, you can see I'm sending an email here to a guy who runs a local powder coating shop. And basically what I said was here, hey, I was going to see what colors you had going in the queue in the next week or two. Maybe one of them would be a cool color for this thing, and I could just uh, save time and such if you could spray it while you're spraying other stuff. Every once in a while, you know, they run some really cool cover colors through over there, and it, uh, you know, maybe I'll just piggyback on that and uh, get this done for a uh, real cheap cheap price. Um, they run black a lot so it's easy to get that done but sometimes they run some pretty cool colors so we'll see what comes out of this. I'm a little bit rolling the dice here. Um, I just want to thank everybody for sticking through this. Probably another week or two till I get this thing back and then we'll try to wrap this whole series up. I will post the build of materials when we get it built and it all functions properly. I'm still kind of holding off on that because we may swap out some components in the final build and I hate for people to go and buy stuff now and uh, let's change it up along the way. Thanks for watching everybody and stay tuned. Um, I've got a video on the Shelby Hemfest I should be putting together tomorrow. Thanks.